Speaking of which, this next question is directed to Commissioner Sparks first. Alabama is consistently ranked at the bottom nationally by every educational yardstick. The education budget suffered a 9% cut this year and will likely be cut again next year. What are your plans and proposals to improve the education system in Alabama? And is more money the only solution? What policies specifically would you propose to make our educational system yield better student outcomes, even if funds are not available? Well, money may not be the only solution, but it sure would help. <laughs> you know, in Alabama today, only 7% of the kids in Alabama get pre-K. You know, if we can raise our graduation rate in Alabama among our males 5%, we save $125 million a year in crime-related incidents. And in 2008, we had 25,000 kids in Alabama that didn't graduate. That is a $6.5 billion loss of income for the state of Alabama. You know, what is a young man or a young woman going to do in Alabama without a high school education on the streets of Birmingham or Montgomery and Mobile? Let me tell you what he's going to do. He's going to go from the schoolhouse to the courthouse, to the jailhouse. Then we go from spending $4,000 a year to educate him to $14,000 a year to keep him in prison. Folks, the bottom line is we gotta educate our children. We gotta give them hope. And that's why I've laid it on the table, the Life Start Lottery Program. That if you're in the ninth grade, and you know that if you graduate, get a diploma or a GED, that there's something over the finish line for you to help you become a better citizen in Alabama. And I'm going to tax the fastest growing industry in Alabama. That is gambling. They're not being taxed today. What's wrong with taxing them and taking care of education, taking care of Medicaid, and taking care of the farmers in this state? What is wrong with that? Our state is broke. We either put those programs in place or we tax you. And I've told you time and time again, I'm not going to tax the working men and women of Alabama and I'm not going to tax the businesses of Alabama. I'm going to tax gambling. We're going to educate our children in Alabama. We're going to raise scholarships in Alabama. And that's the way it's going to be. I'm going to use the agree-disagree model again. I'll tell you where we agree. The voters of Alabama want to approve a lottery. If the legislature wants to approve it, I won't stand in the way. It'll give us another revenue source. Here's where we disagree. I am not going to build a whole strategy on the uncertain possibility of a lottery passing. And here's one practical reason, folks. Let's say the legislature passes an amendment to create a lottery in early 2011. It would have to be on the ballot in 2011, mayor's race, Montgomery, Birmingham. Let's say it passed. We would then have to pass legislation to create a lottery commission and a structure for administering the lottery. We'd have to implement the structure. By the time revenues from the lottery were available to a governor, you'd be in fiscal year 2014, calendar year 2013. Them's just the facts, as they say. Now, when I hear Commissioner Sparks, I mean, when we agree on so many things, that's where the disagreements jump out to me. When I hear him say, I will not tax businesses, I agree with him on the small businesses, but I'm not going to sit here and tell you, I'm not going to say to the oil and gas industry that we're going to tax you a little bit more to drill our resources off our shores, because right now they get a better deal than in other states. And I may say to them, you got to pay your fair share. Uh, I may very well say to companies, who own land in Alabama that's just sitting there and they're paying no property taxes on it, you're going to have to pay your fair share. <laughs> These folks have lived since 1901 on the promise that we're big but treat us like we're little. We're big and have ample resources. Treat us like we're small. Give us the same sympathy. If it were as simple as demanding little from our corporations. Arkansas happens to have the lowest corporate tax rates in the South by far. They also happen to be last in job creation, last in business development year after year. It's not a simple conversation. 
obviously both of us on this stage are going to fight very hard for education. We're going to fight very hard for funding. We're going to fight to save PACT. We're going to fight to expand college affordability. Those are Democratic values, not Sparks or Davis values. Christian. There again, I've told you how I'm going to raise revenue. I want you to ask every governor candidate in the state of Alabama that's running for governor, how are you going to raise revenue? Folks, our children, our children in Alabama are not competing against North Alabama and South Alabama. Our children are not competing against Georgia and Mississippi. Our children are competing against India and China. Our children are, have got to be educated so that they can compete globally. And let me tell you how we do that. We do it by implementing the 21st century framework that we teach our children how to compete globally. We are one of the few states that has not implemented the 21st century framework, and we will never compete. We will never get where we need to go if we don't put our children first. I'm not sure I know what the 21st century framework is, but I do know this much. Here's a place we've gone backwards. We are the one state in the country, numero uno, the only state in the country that spends less money today on financial aid to colleges than we did 10 years ago. We've got to turn that around.